Hello everyone. Well, in this video, I am going to discuss about the put request. Put request is used for updating the existing resource which is present on the server. Let us take the example of the Facebook user. After creating the Facebook user, I want to update the user detail. So in the Facebook UI, I am going to provide the updated information. Once I have supplied the updated information, I will click on the submit button. The moment I click on the submit button, a put call is sent to the Facebook server. And this put call will have the request body that contain the updated data. Along with this put request, a unique identifier will be attached. That will uniquely identify the user information which we are updating. So in our test application, there is an endpoint using which we can update the existing job description in the test application. And this is the context path of that particular endpoint. So for this endpoint, the unique identifier is the job ID. So based on the job ID, it will identify that which job ID the request should update in the test application. So first, let me show you how it is done using the Postman. So first, using the Post endpoint, I will create a new job entry in the test application and using the Put endpoint, I am going to update that entry. So first, let me create the new job entry in the test application. And this is a job entry. Let me send the get request to get all the job entry in the test application. So this is our job entry. Now I'm going to use the put request to update the job entry. So HTTP method is put. This is our base URL. And this is the context path. Now with this endpoint, as I mentioned earlier, the job ID is the unique identifier. If the job ID is not present, the endpoint will return 404 that is not found. Now I need to attach the body that contain the updated information with this request. So in this request body, I'm going to update the job title as well as the job description. Also, I will add a new entry inside the project JSON array. So basically, this is our updated request body. And as you can see here, I'm using the same job ID. And let me send the request. So we get the response as 200 OK and this is the response body. Now let me send the get request again to check that whether the job entry has been updated or not. So as you can see in the response of the get endpoint, the job entry with the job ID as 140 has been updated with the new data. Now let me send the request with the job ID that is not present in the application. So in this case, we will receive 404 that represent not found. That represent that the job ID with this ID does not exist in the test application. Now let me show you how it can be done in the Karate framework. So inside this package, I'm going to add one more child package. And let me call it as put request. So inside this package, I'm going to add a feature file. And let me call it as update job entry. Inside this feature file, first I'm going to use the feature keyword, provide a small title and a short description. Then I will add the background section that will initialize the base URL. And then we will add the scenario. So the scenario which I'm going to automate is, first I will create a new job entry by sending the post request. Then I will update the job entry by sending the put request. Then using the JSON path API, I'm going to verify the updation. So let me copy these steps to our current scenario. And this step is going to create a new job entry in our test application. 
as we need job id for the put request so it is a better approach to store them in a variable and to generate the job id i will use a javascript function that will generate the random job id so i will use this statement for generating the random job id then i will create one more variable to store the generated job id and this id will be used in the post request as well as in the put request for the updation and i am going to replace this hard coded value with the embedded expression now i am going to send the put request that will contain the updated data given path and the context path of the put endpoint then we need to attach the updated request body so and request so whenever you need to specify the request body in multiple lines just enclose them in the double quotes and i am going to update certain detail inside the request body so this is our request body after that we need to attach the headers so i will use this statement for attaching the headers and then we are going to send the put request when method put so just the way we use the post keyword for sending the post request we need to use the put keyword for sending the put request and then we will validate on the status code So after this statement I am going to add the matcher that will validate the response body. As you can see here we have updated the project json array. So the response body should contain the project array whose size is 2. So that is the validation which I am going to add. So first I am going to use the json path api to extract this project array. So I will define one variable that will store the project array. Karate dot json path the first parameter to this api is the json document and in the current scenario response keyword is going to point to the entire response and the second argument to this api is the json path and for the json path i will use the filter condition that will be based on the job id so dollar open and close square bracket question mark open and close bracket at the red symbol dot job id and this should be equal to the value of id variable and then dot project using this json path i will extract the project json array and store it in a variable and now i'm going to add the matcher on this variable and match project array and its size should be 2 because after sending the put request we are adding a new entry inside this project json array so in the response the size of this project json array should be 2 after this i am going to create the runner and this runner will run only this feature file So let me go ahead and run this runner. As you can see here, our scenario is failing. And scenario is failing at the matcher statement. That means at this statement. 
So here I want to highlight one important point about the JSON path API. The return type of this API is a JSON array. That means whenever you use the JSON path API to get the value from a JSON document, it will be written in the form of an array. So let us print what is the value of this project array variable. And let me rerun this runner. So this is the value of the variable that is project array. So as you can see here, the value of the project array variable is in the form of JSON array. So this is the actual value of the project array variable. As we are using the JSON path, so it automatically embedded the value in a, another JSON array, which is this one. Whenever you are using the JSON path API, the result will be in the form of a JSON array. So in this case, we need to use the index and that is zero as we have only one entry. Now the actual data will be referred and the validation will happen properly. So our test is passing. In the similar manner, let me write one more scenario where we are trying to update the job entry with the job ID that is not present in the test application. So let me make a copy of this scenario. So instead of using the embedded expression for the job ID, I'm going to call the JavaScript function directly here so that we will get the random value for the job ID. And in this case, whatever the random value we'll get for the job ID will not be present in the system. And in that case, we should receive 404 as the response status code. So both of our scenario are passing. In the similar manner, you can also supply the XML body in the put request.